Yeah, Bang Bang Ray, I'll just sit with uh, Jefferson King uh, from Shadow Gladiators and uh, I'll just have a quick little video with him, yeah? All right, Jeff. Where are you going, mate? Can you see you all right there, Jeff? Yeah, 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 it's good. It's good. Oh. Oh. Oh, Ty, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, just about to say, Jeff, um, whereabouts, you, whereabouts was you born, Jeff? Whereabouts? <coughs> I was born in uh, Maiderville. In London. Okay. Um, then uh, obviously my parents sort of moved around to Middlesex, uh, Southall. My, 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 my fondest memories are from being in Southall, but apparently I was born in Maiderville. Yeah. And what was your life as a kid? As a kid, is it my yeah, brother and sisters? I, yeah, I got, a, um, I got a brother and sister um, on my mother's side, not the same dad. Uh, I never knew that at the time, but you know, as you know, that's the way it was. Um, yeah, I have a brother and sister. Right, tell me about your life uh, from the, from the early age, Jeff. What, tell me, I won't you up, mate. Just <coughs> carry on. Um, from an early age. Right. What um, was you like as a kid at school? Was you... uh, school didn't learn shit. Um, I'm surprised I even got through school. Um, I was good at art, technical drawing, maths, English, forget it. Um, come from the old school parenting uh, we used to get licks for not knowing the times tables um, anyway at the age of 14 my mother she went over to America to be with her brother to obviously make some money and uh, <clears throat> she sent for me and I went out there lived out there with her in New York uh, in the Bronx well, tell us about tell us about uh, the Bronx, America. Tell us what. Uh, tell us everything about it, Jeff. I had to get I had to, I had to get used to it. When I first got there, I didn't know. Obviously, didn't know anyone. Uh, logged into a school, Dewitt Dewitt Clinton, in the Bronx, uh, all boys school. Uh, I remember my first day at school actually, uh, or first couple of days. I'm walking around with the football coach. He's showing me this and showing me that. And some geezer must have got mugged on the staircase. All his books and papers all over the stairs and that. And that was a, that was a bit of a shock to me. You actually had to walk through um, a metal detector when you entered the school. They used to bring all sorts to school with them. Um, yeah, started playing American. Like a knife crime in it? Was it knife crime? Knife crime? No, no, I didn't see no knife crime. No. Gun crime? Gun it crime? Uh, no, I didn't see, not not in school. But I mean, okay. you would hear about your school anyway. You would hear about your, yeah. your your gunshot going off during the, in the streets and stuff like that. At the time, didn't know what it actually was. But once I got to make friends and guys that lived in my mother's building, I started to say to me, Jeff, that's that's a gunshot. Like you know, <laughs> get down or whatever. What was your other sports at school, Jeff? Oh, um, I was I was before I left to go to America. I was track and field, hundred meters, two hundred meters. I used to throw the shot put. Discus. Uh, yeah, I was pretty athletic. Um, football wasn't too great with the football. I had two left feet, but I could strike the ball once I once I got on it. Um, in America, playing American football, that was more something that I got into. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I loved putting on all the equipment and Why? shoulder Why? pads, rib pads, thigh pads, knee Why? pads, helmet. Why? Yeah, it was great stuff. Great stuff. They used to call me the King of England. I used to punt at first, just start the game, kick off the, the ball. And then I made it to a defensive end, showed a bit of aggression on defensive end, ch you know, chasing down the quarterback and they put me as a linebacker. And um, yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing American. So what, did you have a, what sort of personality did you have at school? Was it a good personality? Or was it yeah, I had a good personality. They, they loved the way that I talked and the way that I sounded. You know, like I said, they used to call me the King of England. Um, yeah, I had a, I had a good time. Mate. No fights, Jeff. No, no fights, no fights at all. No fights. None at all. all. Nothing. No, no. So all. how long was you there for? Uh, boy, I can't really remember now. What? God, I went there at fourteen. Must have been there at least four years. I mean, three or four years. And in, in between that time, going back and forth to to London to see my old man and see my friends and come back again to New York. Yeah. About three or four years. So why did you? What, what, so why did you go back? Why did I go back to America? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, my mother lived there, 
I, I used to just um, go visit my friends really, go see my dad and my sister and my brother. I used to go over to London for a couple of months and then fly back to New York. I mean, you can't stay out. If you stay out of New York for longer than two years, you lose your green card. Okay. So it was kind of like that, in and out. So what would you like when you come back to England? Did you sports? Did you get into sports? Um, I, 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 I was uh, through, through playing American football, I was weight training, my muscles started to grow and I remember seeing a picture of Arnold in the old changing room and thinking, wow, you know, I wouldn't mind looking like that. And, you know, I just, through American football, was weight training. Like I said, the body used to grow. And when I started to come back to England, uh, each, each, each year I started to compete uh, in the junior Mr. Britain. Uh, and you got on with that? Yeah, which I won like 78, 79, 80. Wow. I'm, yeah, wow. I'm the only other person to win it three times other than Bertle Fox. Okay. Uh, junior Britain. Did I you won... know Bertle Fox? Did you know Bertle Yeah, Fox? I used to train with him. I used to train with him at Dell's Gym in Southall. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what was he like? Yeah, he was a nice, nice enough guy. He was a <clears throat> train driver. The only time I used to interact with him was... Um, when it turned five o'clock and he was standing outside the gym before it opened, we would train and that would be it. There, were, there wasn't much of, I was much younger than he was. Um, Did you that, want to be like him? Did you want to be like Bob Oh yeah, I wanted, I wanted the muscle, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I remember times I used to be, because uh, I sweat a lot when I, when I do start sweating, you wouldn't tell if I was crying or not, but I, I, I used to, I used to cry for these, for, that muscle. Really? Do you know what I mean? I used to want it so bad, but uh, used to wonder, would I ever be like that? You know, but yeah, it did. So when did you start realising you could be that big? Uh, <clears throat> I suppose over, over the three times that I won the Junior Britain, um, I was getting recognised as, a, you know, one of the top teenagers in Britain. And, um, you know, things were looking up. I just had to keep on training, keep on growing. And, you know, my... My career as a bodybuilder would have been, would have been, would have been set, really. Did you? Did, so when did you start getting onto the steroids, or did, or did you get onto the steroids? Uh, the steroids. Um, oh, I think I think after I won the Mr. Britain, that I started to. Well, the first know, time, second time. Double time. I used to dabble with the steroids. Um, and what like like what, Jeff? Uh, Decca, Decca. Uh, was, that cut, was it a Decca cut up? No, it? no, it's a it's a strength builder. It's okay. a, a mass builder. Uh, you know, it's not all about just taking steroids and that's yeah, you explain know, to people and, about it. And you yeah, end nice, up looking yeah. like Arnold. You know, yeah. you, you, you got to have uh, you know, genetic potential. You got to be eating enough food in order to gain the weight. You got to be tearing down enough muscle tissue in order for it to rebuild and get bigger. It's not just a matter of yeah, I'm going to take a whole bunch of steroids and you know I'm going to end up looking like Arnold. It doesn't work, it doesn't work like that. If you don't have the genetic potential to produce muscle. No amount of steroids will help you produce it. Okay. You know, you, you might get stronger in the gym. You might, you know, uh, you might uh, uh, blow up because it does kind of make the body retain water. So you you yeah, you, does, yeah. you, you tend to look like you're you're bigger. And mentally and physically, you are stronger. And you know that 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 can turn against you in the end. You know, if if you're not producing muscle, because once you come off the gear, you know you're going to lose all that. All that, what was you thought. Was you as good as, you as, good as, Bert, as Bert or Fox, you think, or what? Well, I mean, he's the only other person to win it three times in a row. I'm the only other person to win it three times in a row. Um, I do believe they used to, they used to, they used to look at me as a, a black Arnold because I was like six foot three. Yeah, massive shoulders. You know, right? yeah, yeah, you know, I was, I was good to go before I, before I got the job as a, a gladiator. Uh, I was just about to get my pro card, you know, to compete as a professional bodybuilder. And um, I stood uh, that way, you know, I figured, well, might as well use my body for something outside of bodybuilding. Well, I was, I, I was uh, at a friend's house, yeah, and he had two weights there. I mean, his weights were ginormous, yeah. absolutely massive. And he was telling me that only Jefferson King mm. and Bertle Fox used to lift these weights. Yeah. And when I see them, I try to pick it up, I went, no way. He said, they were just seat you press these. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah. Well, they they were especially made for Bertle. Okay. Um, they did take it did take a crew of guys to pick them up to give them to him when he was doing. Was his you lifting them as well? Yeah. 
I was I was maybe getting one or two out of it, yeah. But I mean, you know, Bert was like training eight to ten, you know, reps. But wow, man. Yeah, no, I was I was I was strong for 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 a kid for a teenager. I was I was what age strong. You, what age was you? Uh, 18, 19, something like that. Wow, wasn't and then. that big as well. Well, yeah, I was growing. I was growing. Yeah. So, what's the biggest you've been at that age, Jeff? Um, at that age. At that age. Yeah. I don't think I was in much. Weight, in weight I, I, I think I think my 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 biggest uh, accomplishment over my body would be when I was a gladiator. When I reached the stage of being a gladiator, um, I was at my, I was nineteen stone, about five percent body powerful. about five percent body fat, you know, fit as fuck, and uh, I, I I still needed a few minor minor bits put here and put there, a bit more calf, a bit more thigh, a bit more lower back, but generally o- overall. Everything was there. You was talking to me about India when I was in India. What, what, what yeah, I, I used to work with these. Uh, well, was that before? Not, you not just me. Yeah, okay. before. I was okay. Going, okay. Yeah, yeah. I used to. Uh, I had two friends of mine. Uh, one Asian guy, one black guy. They used to work with two bent solicitors uh, that used to do currency exchanges for people in third world countries. Okay. <clears throat> and. Um, uh, what hap- What happens is. They told me about this job, Jeff, you're gonna come with us to India to do a robbery, yeah? At the time, I must have been about 27, 28, I was thinking, you know, robbery, all sounded a bit exciting, but they had done it before in different parts of uh, the world or different parts of third world countries. Anyway, what happens is London sends someone to India to sit and wait to receive X amount of money. When they've received that X amount of money, they phone London, where in London, someone from India is sitting with those two bent solicitors, okay. waiting for the phone call to say, yeah, we've got the money, pay him in London the equivalent. But that never happens. What happens is when they, when London sends someone to India, they also, they also send a hit team as well, which yeah. the Indians don't know about. They just know about the man that's gonna be doing business. And uh, so we arrived in India, after a 14 hour flight, the three of us, uh, the Asian guy went to uh, Taj Mahal Hotel, which is by the gateway of India, big five star hotel. And me and uh, <clears throat> my other mate went to the poor part of India. We were supposed to stay out of the way until. Was your big day, Jeff Massive, big man then? Huh? That was your big day. I was big, I was yeah, big, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was, we were told to stay in the poor part of India until he found out where the money was. <clears throat> Which took about a week to two weeks for him to, for everything to be arranged where he knew where the money was going to be delivered to. My job was to uh, tie everyone up. I had a pocket full of, I had a suit full of ties. Um, and I also had to make up the lecture set cards, the Interpol cards. We were going to flash these Interpol cards once once we arrived at the place where the money was going to be delivered to and take the money. Anyway, we, uh, like I said, it took a week, two weeks. Unknown to us until later, I, might, I may keep on saying this, unknown to us until later, the police were watching the guy, then, yeah. was watching the guy in the five-star hotel. The guy that he was doing business with, his brother was the king of the underworld in Bombay. His name was Dard or something. Big man in drugs, prostitution, money laundering, all that kind of stuff. So the police were watching the Asian guy in the five-star hotel. When we were getting fed, in, in the poor part of India, we were getting fed like, it was scraps. We wanted to get something decent to eat. So we've gone, our first mistake was going to the five-star hotel where the Asian guy was to uh, have something decent to eat. Yeah, that was our first mistake because un- unknown to us until later, the police were watching him because of the brother that he was doing business with. They were watching him and now they realize there wasn't one man, there was three, there was three of them, yeah, three of us. <clears throat> anyway, he finally found out where the money was gonna be delivered to, it was a travel agency. And we had to, okay, we all set out, the three of us, to go and see this money or get this money. <clears throat> and it was in a travel agency. And But before finding the travel agency, it's like walking through Port Bella Market, like, you know, that's the amount of people yeah, that are on the sure. road. You know, there's cows and there's, and there's traffic and there's, you know, people 
And once they see that you're a foreigner, they, they're coming up to you and begging for money and all kinds of stuff. So it was pretty hectic, pretty hectic time. Anyway, <clears throat> we finally find the Five Star Hotel. I mean, the travel agency, sorry. And uh, three of us go upstairs. The guys upstairs. They tell me to stand outside in the corridor. Right, I'm on the third floor. I'm outside the door in the corridor. Them two have gone in. Yeah? But because the people in the building were coming down the staircase, they were seeing me standing there, suited and booted, a black man as well. I mean, there probably wasn't a black man in a five mile radius. And plus I'm sweating. Once I start to sweat, I can't stop, yeah? So I've knocked on the door and said, listen, you've got to let me in. Because I'm getting too much tension outside. So I've come inside. <clears throat> I'm sitting in the corridor. And where I'm sitting by the front door, I can see into the office because it's got a glass wall. So I can see my two mates, the Indian guy, plus he's got two birds next to him, one each side. Can't hear what they're saying, but they're talking business. I'm sitting in the corridor by the front door. After about half an hour, the two girls, they leave. Yeah. And the doorbell goes. I answer the door. There's two men standing there, one old geezer with a a brown package, like, like a, a brown paper uh, box, and one with a big size, family size suitcase. So now I realize the money's here, right? So the three of them, my two mates and the geezer come out of the office, and they, they say to me, the, the two men that came in with the money, they've gone into the back room. You can't see into the back room now, it's just a doorway to get in. So my heart's going at the moment, because you know now it's, this, is, this is the time now. So, <clears throat> They've all, the three of them have gone in, the two men with the money and everything have followed them in, and the two men with the money have gone behind two long tables with a gap in the middle. Yeah, one guy standing there, one guy standing there, and the guy we're doing business with is at the end. So there's three of them on that side, and us three on this side. What happens is we pull out the Interpol cards. So they're thinking that we're police now. Don't forget, this is wow. unaccounted for money. This is drug money, uh, Black market money, prostitution, whatever, they can't account for this money being there. It's two million rupees. Oh, right? So we flashed the badges. What's badges. Your money, two million rupees? About, right. I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it was about 100 grand or, or okay. close to 100 grand, something like that. Okay. I think it was sterling. So we flashed the badges, they froze. But one of the geezers that was opposite me, he'd gone to put his hand in his pocket. So I reached across the table and I, I've dropped him. <laughs> I'm running between the two tables, yeah, and you know, I'm kicking him up and everything else. You know, I, I'm panicking myself. You know what I mean? Now I've got a pocket full of uh, ties, which my job is to tie everybody up. Yeah, so hold tight them. <laughs> hold tight them. While we're while I'm dealing with while we're dealing with the two guys, the two men that brought the money, the phone rings, and the geezer we're doing business with went to answer the phone. But one of my mates, lucky enough, caught him in time, so he couldn't answer the phone. Unknown to us until later, that phone call was his brother phoning to find out how business went, yeah? Phone was constantly ringing while we're tying everybody up. London had said to us, or said to them, my two mates, don't take no personal belongings from the people that you, you, you're gonna rob. But- Was that they, nice watches and- I they, 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 were, they was taking yeah, yeah, off the yeah, nice yeah, watches yeah. and the jewelry and everything else. Yeah. And there was a silver case over in the corner, the camera case, my mate picked it up. Anyway, we've zipped up the money, we're gone. They're all tied up. Phone's constantly ringing. We decide that we're not gonna to go to the Five Star Hotel. We're gonna go back to the poor part of India. Good, yeah. So we get back to the poor part of India. We phone London, the Eagle has landed. London says the streets are hot. Lay low, we'll be in touch, yeah? So the three of us are sitting there now. Someone comes to pick up the money because the money doesn't actually leave India. It's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's not worth anything outside of India, really. So someone's come to pick up the money. My mate's gone outside, delivered the money to them. We've, we've obviously taken out bundles of money for ourselves and everything else. We're sitting here, the three of us, we decide that, let's get the fuck out of here, man. Oh, when we pulled up at the poor part of India, there was a, a policeman walking past, just doing his normal patrol with his bamboo stick and everything. We didn't really pay too much attention to him, but we've gone into the old part of India, the, the hotel we was in. Uh, the geezer's come, picked up the money, the money's gone. <clears throat> London's telling us the streets. So you take your money out, you're not, we, you're, we've taken okay. a few few notes out there. Uh, London's told us the streets are hot, lay low, don't go nowhere. But we decided that we were going to go to the airport, that we were going to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Oh fuck. No. That uh, so we've three of us have gone now to the airport. 
trying to get the tickets that we had to be endorsed. I think it was Air Canada or, or one some other airline so we can get back. Trying to make up all kinds of excuses why we had to leave. Yeah. While we're at the, at the counter dealing with this manager and arguing with this manager about endorsing the tickets, I see three policemen coming towards me. Yeah. Or coming wow. through the crowd. Wow. Yeah. yeah. One, they've both got machine guns. Wow. Or, or, wow. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. And one in the middle, big mustache. AK 47. So he's gone up to me. He says, yeah. um, uh, uh, you three men are you together? Yeah, we're together. Well, what's up now? We haven't got no money. The money's already gone. Uh, uh, pick up luggage. Pick up luggage. You're going to come with us. Yeah. Like what, what's happening? Yeah. Unknown to us until later, that king of the underworld had paid the police to watch that guy in that five star hotel. Wow. He'd man. also paid the police to go and f- see if we were in the airport or look for us in the airport to see if we were going if we were flying out or whatever. So they they've got us now. The Bombay police have come <coughs> with the airport. Was it heavy, Jeff? Or heavy? Oh, it was heavy. Yeah. Luggage, everything taken, put us in separate rooms, interrogating us, interrogating us and everything else. Then they decided that we were going to leave. Oh, yeah. The two guys that we robbed, the two old men, they've turned up. Oh, and one, no. of them's, one of them's recognised his, his camera case. Yeah, and uh, a few other bits and pieces. Anyway, they took us back to the poor part of India. Now we were in like a 17th century police station, you know, fans on the ceiling, louver windows, you know, proper old school yeah, yeah, yeah. police station. And they've got us handcuffed to a water fountain on the floor. Yeah, we're all three of us wow. are handcuffed to a water fountain on the floor where <clears throat> the police would come in, put the water into the into 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 a bottle, yeah, and then spit it out. Yeah. Drink it down and then spit it out. And they would spit it all over the Indian geezer. Because obviously, pan should, you know, you've come into India to rob your own people, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, in the morning time now, <clears throat> in the morning, <clears throat> they've taken the three of us into a room to be uh, interrogated or whatever, yeah? About where the money was. The guy, uh, big long table, about six men behind the table, all got big moustaches and everything, and the one in the middle's got the biggest Is moustache. that true? They're actually like they all big moustaches. Oh, yeah, yeah, you see yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the three of us are standing in front of this long table. The keys has come round. Only one, come round. He's, he's, got, he's, he's grabbed the bamboo stick, and he says to my mate, he says, uh, where's the money? I said, what, what money? He says, you will not leave Bombay alive unless we get this money back, yeah? So what happens is, He's standing in front of him. He slaps him in the ears. Plap, plap, plap. Pokes him with the with the stick. Yeah, he's he's killed over. They put him onto the floor. They dragged a the stool over. Put his put his feet up onto the stool. Took his shoes and socks off. Wow. Wham, wham, wham. Beating his feet. He's screaming blue murder. They dragged him out. Oh, so, there's, only two, oh. On, there's only two of us now. Yeah. yeah. Same my other mate. Ooh. That's the Indian guy gone. Now my other mate. Yeah. Same thing. Plat, 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 tom, on the floor, shoes and socks off, whap, 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 pulls him out. I'm standing there by myself now, yeah? The guy's gone back around the table, sat down, he goes to me, Michael, if we attack you now, you fight us? I says, yeah. He says, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. I told you so, yeah. I told you so, that's what he says to his colleagues and that, yeah? Next thing you know, I'm standing in front of him, I'm posing. Good. I've got my shirt off Good. and everything. I've dropped my trousers. I'm flexing my legs Good. and everything else. They, 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 they can't get over the size of it. Yeah. Right? And because in my passport, they'd only been stamped once, they thought they could get the information they needed from me. Yeah. Whereas in their passport, they've been stamped many loves, a times loves, in different yeah. different places where these things have taken place. So I just said to him, listen, I, I don't know anything. Yeah? I was, I'm a bodyguard. I was told to look after this man. I got... Uh, airline tickets through the mail, met them at the airport, and, I, and I've come. They thought we were part of a syndicate. Uh, they thought we were part of a mafia or, you know, don't forget, international robbers. We've been sent how many hours, 14 yeah, hours to wow. India to do a robbery. Anyway, they decided to lock us up in the police locker. Yeah, there was a two-story building, about 10 cells upstairs, 10 cells downstairs. Downstairs was completely packed, jam-packed. Yeah, there was no door to the cell. You could come out of the cell and walk the corridor from one end to the other wow. end. Yeah, but so they put us in there. So when they when they put us in there, 
the room that we were, the, the cell that we were going to go into was packed. We threw everybody out. So there's three of us are sitting there on the floor on on on, on carpet. And toilets, Jeff, and all that. Yeah. Toilets. There was one toilet. I'll come to that. Yeah. There was one toilet, at, but I'll come to that anyway. <laughs> so we've thrown everybody out of the room, and then we started saying to them, "Listen, you know, you can't treat us like this. British British passport holders. Blah 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 blah." They moved us upstairs. So there's only three of us upstairs, and there's ten empty cells. There's no doors to the cell, so you can come out of the cell and walk the whole length. Of the and you're looking out onto the courtyard, yeah. There's a toilet at the end, and there's a hole in the ground. No. Yeah, I mean there was antique shit in there. Yeah. Oh. I refused to go in there. Yeah. My mate used to go in there every. I, I must have. I don't think I shit for about two weeks, and wow. when I did, I had to shit in a plastic bag because oh. I would not go into that fucking okay. room. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you go in there, and there's green lizards all over the ceiling. I mean, it was fucking. Every morning I could hear him go, no. I said, but why do you go in there, man? <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, so, uh, all of a sudden, after a couple of days of being locked up and that, London had paid an advocate to come and see us. So this guy's come, big fat Indian geezer. He says, my name is Sweet Tom. Yeah, London has paid me to represent you, to get you on bail. Yeah, so the money, they didn't have, don't forget, they didn't have the 100 thousand pound the equivalent of the two million rupees well, okay. they had it took them two to three weeks to to get together get five yeah. ten grand just yeah. to pay the advocate to look after to represent us yeah yeah so he came brought us fags and everything he used to send for food from the outside hotel twice a day to chicken tikka lamb tikka because we couldn't eat the food they were serving downstairs if you see the slops bad? the slops that they were giving them downstairs was yeah. unbelievable unbelievable man so anyway um and now, you still didn't use the toilet, Jeff? No, I didn't use the toilet at all. Okay. When I had to go to the toilet, I had to shit in a plastic bag because wow. I refused to go in that room. Okay. I mean, that room was... God knows when oh, the last time it, yeah. it was... It was like a hole in the, in the ground. That's how yeah. they shit over there, yeah. mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, anyway, after a couple of days now, seeing the advocate and him getting us meals and that, tobacco and all that kind of bollocks, there used to be a little tea boy and his mum used to live on the side of the police station. They used to make cups of tea for the... For the, for the officers and every morning you should see the little kid run well, I thought it was a little kid he was about 15 but he was only about 4 foot something you know what I mean he used to run past the, the courtyard and he'd have a tray with the tea on it to, for the police officers so then my mates called him upstairs says to him uh, he used to look up at us and say chai 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 so yeah, yeah come 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 but we wanted to get some ash yeah some ashish so my mates like because the advocate's given us money you know, through, through London He's given him a few quid, told him to get us some ash. So next day he's come, he's got a matchbox underneath the tr underneath the, the silver tray of, of, of the tea, <laughs> tea cups. And he's come upstairs and he's given us the matchbox and it's got like temper ball in it. Yes, yeah, so, because so, we were smoking like five, I think they're called five, five, five cigarettes or something like that. So we'd empty out the cigarettes and, you know, make, make, make a spliff or whatever. Every morning when the police used to come out, before they used to go out to disperse out into the street, they would come out into the courtyard. And they, before they get their notes and everything before they go out, and they'd be always looking up and saying, "Michael, Michael," calling me, and I'd come to the to the to the to the bars. Is that what I knew? Yeah, it's Michael. Michael, yeah. yeah. I'd come to the bars and and I'd be I'd be I'll be flexing for them. <laughs> yeah, terrific. I remember when, when we went to court, they yeah. they all wanted to be handcuffed to me. I was you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, we've gone to court. Um, long story short, we got bail in a way. And oh, sorry, I, 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 I was meaning to tell you that the geezer whose brother, not the geezer we did the business with, the brother who was the king of the underworld, okay. died. He came to see us, right? And whenever I used to see him coming with the police officers, my stomach used to turn because this geezer he always brought bad news. Powerful, yeah. yeah. He would always tell us, listen, you would not leave Bombay alive unless I get my money back, yeah? Always, always had bad news. Anyway, one night, I forgot this. One night they've come and they've taken Greg. During the night they've come into the cell, grabbed him and taken him. Next day they've gone to us, uh, me and the Indian guy. Your friend? I said, yeah, yeah, your friend is dead. Wow. What are you talking about he's dead? Wow, Jeff. I, I'm, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a wreck it. now, I'm a wreck now. I can't believe I've fucked up my whole life. I'm about 28 years old. I can't believe that, you know, I've, I've done this. My old man thinks I've gone on a bodyguard job, which it was kind of a bodyguard job outside being a robbery. Well, 
<laughs> yeah. So I said to my... You're back losing a digest. Well, listen, I said to my old man, I said, I'll be back in two days, three days. Wow. I've been gone like three weeks now. Got yeah. Yeah? And we're... They've taken Greg out. And the last... The next time we saw Greg was in court. Wow, crikey. So, you know, they obviously didn't kill him, but they, they threatened us with, with the thought of him being dead when they took him to find out where their money was. Yeah. Do you get me? But anyway, we, we ended up... Uh, the advocate... The guy said to us, the King of the Underworld said to us, uh, if this guy died... The guy, I mean, not died, this, this uh, advocate is working with you. Tell me, because I would cut, cut his balls off, you know what I mean? Like, really? For him to even represent you against me over my money. Anyway, this Was he this, that powerful, Jeff? Was he that powerful? This guy died? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon you talk to most Indians that that know what goes on in India. Died is a big man in, in, in India. Okay. You know what I mean? As far as drugs, prostitution, okay. Okay. all that kind of stuff. He's a big mafia man in, in India. Um, yeah, anyway, we got Bell. We got Bell, and um, that guy, the advocate, put his self on the line saying that he would go back to London with us to, to guarantee the other half of the money because London did send some money. Do you know what I mean? They had to send some money. Otherwise, we weren't going to come out of there. They were talking about we we're going to go up north for some fucking prison, breaking rocks or some shit like that. You no. get me? So they had to get us out of there. You get wow. me? Wow. And me, I was just freaking out. And my mates, she's all, were always saying to me, Jeff, they... So what happened to the money that you took out, Jeff? What happened to the money you took out of the bag? What, what happened to that cash? The, Indi the Indian money? Yeah. That, 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 that doesn't leave India. Oh, oh. oh well, well, I'm on about the money oh, yeah, when, when, out. Yeah, when we got bail, before we got our flights, we went yeah. and done a bit of shopping. Okay. And, yeah, your silk shirts and suits and that kind of stuff and leather bags. And, you know, just... just yeah. They never took that money off you, Jeff, or you hit that? No, they, no, but they okay. never, never got that money. Okay. Never got that money. Yeah. Mm. Well, go on then. Yeah, no, like I said, I think the end of the story is uh, we, we got Bell. We got Bell and uh, got our passports back and we was on a flight back to London with the advocate, the guy that represented us, that London had paid to represent us. Okay. He's volunteered himself to come with us to guarantee to the underworld guy the other half of the money, but wow. he never got the other half of the money, and God knows what happened to him when he went back to India. So what happened? What, what, did you do any other body work, body bodyguard work, Jeff? Was Outside you doing, of that, yeah. Was that, was that before Gladiators? This is before or? Gladiators. Before okay. Gladiators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I used to work. I used to go to uh, uh, Pucci's Pizza on uh, the King's Road. Yeah. Anybody that was anybody used to go there. You always used to see. Uh, Georgie Best sitting in the corner having his meal with his glass of wine and that. You, anyone in... Who was known? In known, in, the, in that area, would be in that restaurant okay. on a Friday night or whatever, Saturday night before they went out. And uh, my, I was introduced to an Arab guy, through Pucci, the guy that owned the restaurant, and he said he was looking for a chauffeur, someone to pick up his family that were coming from Dubai or whatever, pick up his family, uh, show for them around so they can do their shopping. And that's how I started, um, doing just that, driving the family around. And then before I knew it, they liked me so much, he liked me so much, that he took me on to be with him. He didn't actually need a bodyguard, but I became his... Personal. Personal bodyguard. How and, big was you, Jeff, then? Was it big? Um, yeah, like I said, I, this is all leading up to being a gladiator. So I, I was, I was, you know, I was in it. I was, I was, I was big. And you're being... Well, you come, you won it three times. Junior, Junior, Is that before gladiators or that's before gladiators. That's seventy eight, okay. seventy nine, eighty. Uh, uh, okay, well, tell us about how you got into gladiators, Jeff. I used to watch the American program. Okay, um, they used to have it on a Friday night, like two, three in the morning. Uh, so come back from the club and you know turn TV on, and there would be this American gladiators. Uh, at the time. Obviously, didn't know how big it was, how small it was, but they used to do, they used to do their arena was like a cardboard cutout. Their arena in front of like a thousand people, really? studio sort of thing. Was this in America? In America, wow, yeah, all that, that money is a gold. Right, cut. right, and uh, we took it from them, or took that concept from them, and turned it into ten thousand plus twice a day in wow. a, in a real arena. Wow. You know, so we, we completely smashed it out of the ballpark compared to how the Americans uh, presented it. Our, our program of the Gladiators was... Tell us more about Gladiators and the people in it, Jeff, when you was started. Uh, well, I applied I applied for it, got um, put on a shortlist. 
uh, was sent out to Woolwich, to an army barracks, uh, put for our paces. And oh, you have to train for that? Oh, yeah, yeah they, they put us through, you know, assault courses, and the PT instructors put us through a number of exercises inside the gym, and climbing ropes. And was that normal for you, beans. Jeff? Was, you, was that normal for you? Oh, yeah, um, Or not at all? The climbing ropes wasn't so much normal for me, but as far as, like, you know, being determined and being sort of, you know... you. Yeah, that was yeah, me. That was yeah. all about me, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and from that, uh, put on a short list, like I said. And don't forget, thousands of people tried out, me. I mean, you know, every dormant, every hard, every big guys, man, said, every, yeah? Uh, yeah, sorry? Big guys went all, all trying for it? Yeah, I would imagine so. I mean, they went, they went through the whole country wow. looking, for contest, uh, looking for people to try out for this uh, okay. gladiators. It wasn't just in London that they... So how many was there, Jeff? How I many actually was there on, oh. on Gladiators? Uh, oh, there were 12 or six guys okay. and six girls. Okay. Yeah. And who were they? Who were they? Can you remember? Uh, can I remember? Uh, uh, Cobra, Saracen, Warrior, uh, uh, Wolf, myself. Uh, did I mention Cobra? Yes. Yeah, uh, well, I think Hawk. No, Trojan. Trojans, so there were six okay. guys and then there were six girls. The Panther, uh, Lightning, Scorpio, Nightshade, uh, Jet, and... Uh, Everyone liked Jet, you know. A lot of people loved, loved Jet, didn't they? Oh, she, she was a sexy girl, mate. She, yeah, yeah, she, okay. was, she was lovely to look at. Yeah, 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 she was lovely. Was she good at what she done, Jeff? Or was she yeah, she was... Uh, Who was the best woman there, Jeff, you thought? I, I would have to say Lightning. Okay. Lightning was uh, more like myself. Yeah. You know, she got stuck in. She wasn't. Was she black? No, white, white okay, bird. Okay. She wasn't like hand, but hand Was there any black girls there, Jeff? There, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nightshade, Nightshade was black. She okay. came from the athletic world. Okay. But as far as um, competitive in the arena, you know, there wasn't. They, they, they all seemed to be lacking that bit of power. That bit of yeah, enthusiasm, power. Yeah. The only person, even even up to today, and you're talking thirty years down the road, the only person that I can vouch for or say that was like me was like was Lightning. Really? Yeah. Wow. She, you know, she came to us when she was like eighteen years old, but you know, she was full of desire and 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 you know, get up and go. You is know it a lot mean? of aggression? Do you feel like is it aggression, Jeff? Or oh, uh, well, I suppose or you is it got professional. What no, is it? Aggression? You've got to have a bit of aggression. Yeah. I mean, your your job, your job as a gladiator is to provide a challenge for the contestant who is the fittest. Of the fittest of that area, or whatever, of, of whatever, or, whatever yeah. area you know, they've, they've come from all walks of life, and people throughout the country have tried out. Thousands of people tried yeah, out yeah. to be a contestant. So you've got to be on top of your game to to be there. Ex police officers, ex fire uh, firemen, you know, all all kinds of uh, people, martial arts. Uh, so how did you feel? How did you feel when you see these sort of people coming towards you as that he was the governor of that? Didn't bother me. Didn't oh, bother. didn't bother you? No, no, I, I, I wasn't. You knew you were, you I wasn't interested you were the best. in any of that. I wasn't interested in any of that. You knew you were the best. I wouldn't even talk to them. Okay. When, they, when they came to Gladiators in the house, they, oh, would, you they really would have, was like that, they would have a week okay. on training on the apparatus, yeah. and then a two weeks filming. But wow. in that time that they're going to be trained on the apparatus, they may come across us, but I don't talk to none of them. I don't want to know you. Yeah, I will talk to you in the green room, you, the green you. room after the show. Okay. Yeah, but... For now, I've got nothing to say to you. I don't like you. No, I've got nothing to say to you. Because I'm going to bring it. You best be ready, I'm going to bring it. And that, and that, that was my attitude. Yeah, he was a very violent man. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, yeah. I'm the only person to break those sticks. Wow. I'm the only person to break those sticks. Really, Jeff? I mean, that's, that's how violent I used, to, I, used to, I used to deliver my blows. I always thought, because watching it, I always thought it was a little bit of a... A get up, you know? No, the only person that had a role to play was Wolfman. Yeah. Wolf, okay. big bad Wolf. He might push people about and get disqualified by the John Anderson, by the judge or whatever. The, I mean, the referee might disqualify him or, you know, make him go and stand over there or whatever. But everybody else was there to provide a challenge. So when you got, when you climb the ladder to get up to the top, yeah? Yeah. Tell me how you felt. How the, you the, feel? rigor, the rigors, the yeah, that, yeah. That, that, bring, that that changed the set, yeah. that changed the game set on in the arena. He used to be there, and he used to say to me, as I'm climbing the stairs, they'd be like, rip his head off, Shadow, rip his head off. Really? Or, or they'd be placing bets to see how long that person would last up And how was the long, long as anybody's uh, last? No, not long, not long. I, I, I wouldn't imagine that, um, 
more than five. Five I ain't seconds. gonna say nothing, Jeff. So I'm tempted to say something. But I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, I'm yeah, tempted. yeah. I'm I, tempted. I, I, okay, go on, go on. Say it, say it, well, say it. I heard that Gary Mason. Gary Mason yes. uh, beat you. Is that no? Good? He he. Gary Mason mm. in among the celebrity gladiators. He stepped across onto my platform and pushed me off. Yeah, okay. Admittedly, in the beginning, I thought that he had just thrown out a jab. I knew who he was as far as I knew he was a boxer. Yeah. That's, that's that's all I knew about him, but I so thought... So what was he, 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 I mean, Gary Mason was a star, really. So what was that a star, what, was it, what, what sort of, at what that time, what what they, how many people was there as stars or oh, whatever? So there was Gary Mason, there was uh, uh, Barry McGuigan, okay. there was um, the football player, what's his name, the one that went into movies and that. The hard man that yeah. fucking grabbed all the what's name of nuts and that. Oh, yeah, go on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinnie yeah, 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 Jones, Vinnie yeah, yeah, Jones was Jones, there. Yeah. All, all types of celebrities were there. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, I remember playing Powerball one time and they got to dunk the ball into a basket, but it's like it's like playing rugby. Yeah, yeah okay. And I think uh, Warrior must have clotheslined Vinnie Jones. They didn't show this on what TV, but he was, yeah, yeah he was yeah. well upset. He was like, you fucking cunts and all that kind of stuff, but they, they obviously cut all that oh, out, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, he was upset about it. I remember Barry Quiggan saying to me one day, um, Shadow, listen, just hit me a couple of times, I'm going to jump off you. Yeah? I'm not, not, not going to stay up there for you to bat at me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, what was Barry Quiggan to you? Well, he was a little I'm not rigid, was so the so was the, My producer said to me, he said, let him hit you a few times, Shadow, yeah. you know, make it good. Don't get rid of him too quick, because so it's what, no good uh, for So how long did you go, Mason, yourself last, uh, Jeff? Well, I let, him, I let him knock me about a few times, and yeah. then... Like I said, he, he said to me he wasn't going to stay up there f to get battered, so I think I must have thrown maybe two blows and he came off. So what happened after after him cheating? Well, he wasn't cheating, he just didn't want to stay up there to get yeah. to take licks. And that, okay, you know? so after he's cheated, yeah, all right, and knocked you off. Who? Mason? Did he knock you off? Gary Mason? Yeah. It was all like, <laughs> okay, he stepped across and pushed me off. Yeah. I thought at the time he had just jabbed me with the stick and I right. thought as I'm going down I'm thinking bro you know this guy's powerful when I got up off the max everybody around me was saying no Shadow fight him again he stepped across and did you fight him yeah I fought him again and beat but, him. but my stick and beat him no my okay. stick ended up touching his platform okay and they called it a draw Okay. Yeah, that's what happened. Is that what I believe that or is it? Is it, is it, is it that's uh, the truth of the matter, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's what happened. Okay, so who else? Anybody else? Take, no, no one else. Off? You sure? Hang on, let me. Let me I heard a little there. something, a little whisper. I did, I did hear a whisper. Oh, I might have stumbled one time. Yeah. I might have stumbled and landed on or touched so the other side. How many times would you say that you've won on up there, Jeff? How many times have people let's, beat let's say two times beat, lost. Two beat you out of how many? Oh, thousands, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Wow. You're talking over, you're talking over, wow. over three years. And money, what sort of money, Jeff? In the first year, they were paying us 500 a show. Wow, is that all? That's all. No merchandise rights, no repeat fees like the Americans get. No. They are all millionaires, the American gladiators. Wow. Because of, they get the repeat fees, they get part of the merchandise. We didn't get any of that. You, we got a flat wage. Uh, if you didn't like it, you didn't sign the contract, and there's thousands of other people out there that wanted your job. That's how they played it. That's how they played it. In the second year, when they realised that the program was successful, they upped it to seven fifty a show. You could make say two, three grand a month doing personal appearances. And Not stuff a lot, like. Jeff, is it? Not a lot. I mean, you know, I never paid any taxes, and I ended, ended up going bankrupt. I owed the, the man like tax man about thirty grand or something. Um, but yeah, you know, it was. Who was the best gladiator, Jeff? Myself. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah? I've got everybody... Yeah, I, I'm not just blowing my own trumpet there. You know, I, I was singled out number one gladiator in the world. I mean, you've got Swedish gladiators, German, American. Who did, you go, did you go, like, different gladiators? Uh, no, they came to us. International gladiators, they all came to you, us. Oh, yeah, the show international gladiators. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. none, none of them other places had the arena to hold 10,000 plus people. Wow. Like we did. that much, Jeff? Yeah, twice a day. Long day, mate. 14 hour a day. What, for 14 hour a day? 14 hour a day. Hour a day. Two, I think it was like two to Was it five, five, 500 pound a week or 500 pound a show? 500 pound a show. So how many shows you do, Jeff? Uh, say about 15 from like between July. What, in a week? 
No, in, 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 the, in the two weeks, you do two shows a day uh, for about three oh, weeks, two weeks. Week. <laughs> yeah, and they go out in September and they run all the way up to Christmas, every Saturday till Christmas. Wow, Jeff. Mm. And why do you think it with you? Can I ask you that? Uh, I was you? accused of sniffing a line of cocaine in, in, a, in a piano bar I used to go to in the King's Road, uh, which was purely fabricated on the basis of that story they... I'm not proof they have. What they, proof? they had no proof, no proof. All they had was my Jeep outside the restaurant and uh, that, that was about it. You know, it was... Uh, on the basis of that, of that story, they... Uh, I don't know, cut off their nose, spite their face. Or so tell us about how, how, how you accept it, Jeff. So what happened, how did you accept it? How did I accept it? Well, uh, there wasn't much I could do about, do about it. I mean, at the end of the day, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, you know, if, if I'm somewhere and we're going to have a line of coke and go into the toilet now, you know, there was uh, two cubicles and uh, uh, three basins, you know, I'm not going to go in there and just start, you know, I'm not going to go into a cubicle with anyone that I don't know. For sure. You know what I mean? So you're telling me you got an undercover reporter that was in the cubicle with me when I took out a brand new 50 pound note, rolled it up, sniffed it and said, oh, I can get any bird I want in this place and all that kind of bollocks. I don't talk like that. And yeah. you know, that, that wasn't me. But on, like I said, on the basis of, of that story, LWT let me go, I suppose, because I suppose because I was big in the game. Was you big, Jeff? Yeah, when I, say, big, when I say yeah. big in the game, you know, I don't believe gladiators would have survived without me, to tell you the truth. I, I was a serious side of gladiators. I was, I, was doing, I was a side that contestants would train. Just for you? Just for me. They, they weren't concerned about Wolf, about Saracen, Cobra, Hunter. They weren't concerned about those, those guys. They were concerned about me. And I'm not just talking about in the duel. I'm talking about it, whichever, whichever that, game. Whatever. Whatever game. They, well, yeah, generally, like after every, every show, yeah? Mm. Did anybody ever come up to you and say, look, you're lucky this or lucky that or whatever? Lucky in the sense of? Lucky that you're, you do this as a business, not as huh. as a profession. Do you understand? No, you, no, 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 no one ever done that. No, no, you know, you know, once the show was over. You didn't get no problems, no No, no, no. Once the show was over and they were, all went to the green rooms with their families and all that kind of stuff, I would go and have photos taken with them, sign autographs, you know. Tell them you put up a good fight, you know. Why respect. did you get the sack, Jeff? It doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't make sense. Line of cocaine yeah, 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 come on. But that's Does that want you out of it, Jeff? You think? Did you think they want I don't, you out of I it? I don't necessarily think the producer Nigel wanted me out of it. I think it's because the the profile that the show gave was the age limit was like between five and fifteen. Even though fifteen and twenty fives used to watch it, or families used to sit down on a Saturday night yeah, and watch it, it, yeah. it was it was catered for. The young generation, and I think I just had too much. I suppose, you know, I, I, ne I never, I never looked at things like this back then. But now, you know, people bring certain things to me, and I, I think to myself, you know what? I, I don't know. Do I have too much influence? Was I, was I? You know, they always said that no one person is bigger than the program. But I'm sorry, I, I, I was the program. Did you think that you were getting a sack from gladiators? Yeah. Did you <laughs> think that turned you into drugs, Jeff? Yeah, it probably did. Um, when Would I say, you blame that? Would you blame that? Probably did. You know, my whole life was turned upside down. You know, I, I, I gave up being a pro bodybuilder to, to do the gladiator thing. And then, you know, I wasn't the only person. I wasn't the only person that was doing drugs. I wasn't the only person that was, you know, having a dab of speed in the morning and all that kind of bollocks, you know what I mean? Yeah. So why, why target me? Why target me? Because I, I, by, by firing me, they can show the nation that they weren't they got the, rid of the best one. They got yeah, rid of, yes. yeah. And if they got rid of their best one, then it must yes. be a serious thing. Yeah, it must be me? a serious thing. For but sure, then look Jeff. what happened. They died of death. They went from 17 million viewers to 12 million. I, I would have appeared at Arnold, Jeff. It's not. I don't know. From the time they got rid of me, that nobody used to, a lot of people stopped watching the programme. There was nothing to watch. Boy, yeah. you know, watch Wolfman running around chasing people and pushing people about. People wanted to see action. You know, people, yeah. the serious side of that is, 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 is that competitive side. Do you think, do you think personally now, why, as as ex-gladiator, do you reckon you could do that show now? Not not, not do it, no. but produce it? Well, no. no get, I mean, or get into it, start it. I, I mean, I, I, wouldn't mind, I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't have minded being a presenter in, in Gladiators. Uh, you know, if, if I didn't go out the way I did, I'm, I'm sure they might have had a little place for me. But um, uh, as far as competing as a, a Gladiator now, no, obviously not. You know, I'm too old for that now. I'm, I'm not know, saying you're too old to do it now. I'm saying, would you 
start it again? Would you get people to come in as gladiators now? You know, as a cup. Well, the the program the program has started again. Oh, they, is it? They, okay. They, they, they've revamped it. I don't know if they revamped it, but the Gladiator is is back on TV. I don't know if it's if it goes out in September of this year, but the, I'm sure that these months now, June, July, they're they're actually filming for it to go out in the fall and run right up until Christmas. So if they if they if they showed if they showed Gladiator as, as it was in the nineties, yeah, mm. would you get paid for that? No. Why? No. Like why? No, like I said, we've got no repeat fees. Wow, man. And no merchandise rights. And they made millions. That's crazy. Millions, millions. I, I've had the guy that made the dolls in there telling me that uh, myself, Wolf and Jet were the leading selling dolls that they, they, oh, they could yeah, sell. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. You know what I mean? They made millions, mate. Millions. What about signatures and all that, Jeff? Signatures? I mean, the, the, card, the cards, the yeah, so, cards. So, so I went out to Stoke-on-Trent one day. Yeah. One weekend to a market to sell my posters. This is before the official poster. My posters. What yeah, was that for, like? For, what was that just like? of me, a picture of me. Okay. On a big eight by ten or whatever, for a pound each. I made four and a half grand in about three hours. Wow. The police came out and moved me on for causing an obstruction. It was like the Queen herself was visiting Stoke on Trent. Really? That's how many people came to that market just to get a signed autograph from me. Seriously, right? Yeah. Do you think that that would happen now? Do you think if, like, you... Uh, we haven't gotten to the prison side of it yet, uh, uh, but you coming out of prison, yeah. right? You, you know what you've done was wrong or yeah. whatever, yeah? yeah? So you've changed. You've changed everything you've changed, yeah? Yeah. Right. Do you think that now... People want to see me. People want to see you. you I, think I, people, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, I sort of... You know, I have to... Do you ever go anywhere and people no, are looking at oh, you? Oh, like, yeah. I mean, if I go somewhere and people recognise who I am, I mean, it's, you know, when I, when I got to... doesn't matter if it was Scrubs, High, high Down or Ford. When I, when I arrived there, the whole place knew that Shadow was here. Could you think you could walk down Oxford Street now? And maybe lo loads of people... Would Oxford Street, it would depend if they're of my era. Age, yeah, of yeah. Of that era. Yeah, yeah, for them to look at me and think, oh, you look like that geezer from... You know, or if I was to walk down the road in my daddy in a tracksuit, you know, Shadow. Surely, being that he was Shadow mm. and the Gladiators, anything you do now would bring in custom, surely. I would like to think so, but then I, I also sort of think to myself, okay, it's been 30 years. Who really wants to know? I keep saying this, who really wants to know what I'm doing now, what's going on in my life? Yeah, yeah. there are loads of people but, out there. But apparently, them. apparently, it is the case that people do want to know. You know, people that uh, had love for me back then, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I made a mistake, yeah? Okay, I, I, I fell from grace and uh, I tried to pick myself up and I picked myself up in the wrong way and I started dealing drugs and, and selling well, drugs. Tell us about, so we'll talk about that now, talk about the drugs. What made you get into this, this heavy... I mean, I was on crack myself for eight years, Jeff. Huh? Eight years I was on crack. That got me a sentence of an IPP, but it's not about me, it's about you, I'm talking about you. Yeah. Tell me about what, how, how did you come around to do what you've done. I've been, I've been, uh, I, I sampled uh, crack cocaine in the 70s, in, in the late Wait, 70s. Where, in America? In America, yeah, okay. when it was an epidemic. That's what I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I started awesome. smoking there, you know, and, and you know, yeah, I've always liked to get high and, you know, what can I say? You know. Can I say, did... When you said you've done it in America, what, in the Bronx? Yeah. Do you think they brought crack in to upset black people, Jeff? Yeah, I reckon so. You couldn't get it in New Jersey, Queens, Long Island. You couldn't get, you couldn't get that there. I think, they, I think they, they let them have it. Go ahead, fuck yourselves up. Do you know what I mean? You think it was like... I mean, I'm not a... I'm not, I'm not, a poli not politics, I'm, I'm not a political but, yeah, man, but yeah. I believe, yeah, they let them have it. They let them... So have you had anybody, like, anybody famous talk about you, Jeff, on television or anything no, like that? No, no. No way, no, since you only got no, chucked off? No, listen mate, no I, one. I, I haven't spoken or seen any of the gladiators since I, since really? the day I came out of gladiators. Not, not one of them has called me and said, Jeff, how you doing, mate? Sorry, mate. And, uh, yeah, yeah sorry, what happened to you? No, nothing. I got, I, got, I got that kind of uh, reaction from people I didn't even know. Wow. Do you know what I mean? I remember meeting a... Uh, Courtney once, not Courtney? not Courtney, not Courtney. Uh, okay. What's the other villain's name? Uh, 
Uh, loads, I, I went. I went to. I went to open. Cool. Yeah. I went to an opening of a pub in East London. Okay. Oh, what's his name? Not Dave Courtney. Uh, another big villain, anyway. Like crazed, crazed type of man. Yeah. His name might come to me in a minute. You anyway, know, I was introduced to him in the pub that they, they opened up in that. They had pictures all around the top of the seat, around the edge of the ceiling. There, my pitch, one of my pictures was up there. And he came over to me and he said to me, it was wrong what they've done to you, son. He goes, it's nice to know we've got good people around us. And patted me on the shoulder. What is his name? What, he had a pub? Did he have a pub? No, he was just one of the, one of the villains that were there. And he's from the era of, of uh, the Cray brothers and all that kind of stuff. Wow. Not, not Dave Courtney though, it wasn't Dave Courtney. I know Dave Courtney because I used to work doing the doors and that I've seen, I've come across him. Uh, oh, for the life of me, I can't, I think, of, pick I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could, I wish I could. The more I'm thinking about it, the more it's slipping away from me. Um, I don't know why Dave Courtney came to my mind. That, that, that completely threw me when I said Dave Courtney. I've got to take a leak. What then? Uh, yes, um, uh, this is uh, Bang Bang Ray Hill. Um, um, Jeff is a very good friend of mine. I've known Jeff for years and years and years, yeah? He's a gentleman. He doesn't lie. I've never known Jeff to lie. Uh, he's got no need, no need to lie, yeah? So what he's talking about now is the actual truth, yeah? And I'm really pleased to get him on a podcast, like talking like he is now, because there's no one else really can make him say the things that he's saying. Um, please, anyway, be, he's just going to have a, a quick toilet and leave it back, yeah? in a couple of seconds, I suppose. Anyway, thank you very much for everybody going to my podcast, yeah? And don't forget to like and subscribe, yeah? But anyway, be out in a second. George trying to think of his name, I can't you think of You still can't get it, Jeff. Eh? Hey? You still can't get it? No. Not Freddie Foreman, nothing like that. Not Freddie Foreman? Fred not Foreman? Fred, not Freddie Foreman, no. Not Roy Shaw, nothing like that? No, no, no. Not no. Lenny McLean? Oh, oh. Not Lenny McLean, no, no. I know who Lenny McLean is. He's dormant, isn't he? Okay. He's not, yeah, 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 yeah. Not him, yeah. no. Not oh oh let's have a look. Um, who else is there? Oldish geezer. He would, he would have to be the same age as the craze net. He was around. Oh, he was, um, he was I've around. got. Ah, I know who you're talking about. No, I know who you're talking about. Um, oh my god. <laughs> oh what? Um, he had. He, he, he was a manager of Shawy as well, wasn't he? Um, I don't know what. He, oh what? what, what was. What's his name? But the guy that introduced me to him, he goes to me, Jeff. Do you know who that was? Mm. And I was like, oh my god, and I didn't know who he was because he's a yeah, big villain, like big villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get it, I'll get it now, I'll get it in a second. I'm, I, know, I know it's him. Oh, what I'm always talking about was happening. So, no, no, I can't. He's, <laughs> he done me in, Jeff. He done me in. Um, what? Not God. Oh. Um, Jeff, I'm going to see him. I can see him. I'm looking at him now. Um, anyway, I remember walking into that pub yeah, and yeah. it was like, the whole pub was full of gangsters. You, gangsters. You could, you could just, you could just. Everyone suited and booted. You could just sense that you couldn't even look at any of the women that were in there because yeah. you didn't know who they were with. But all, you, all you could see was just pure sort of gangsters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where was the pub, Jeff? Where was the pub? I don't know. Somewhere in East London. Can't remember exactly where now. Okay. It was so long ago, but somewhere in East London there was. Yeah, they opened up a pub. No, Joe Paul. No. Joe Paul. No. No? No, you mean the name of the guy I'm talking yeah. about? No, so, no. Not Joe no. Kyle? No. Um, if you say his name, I, I, I would know straight away that yeah, that's it. Um, I just can't, for the life of me, can't think. And I've told this story a number of times. Him, me being introduced to him, 
and him saying just that to me, yeah. So it's, it's, it's wrong what they did to you, son, but it's good to know we've got good people around us, and that. that's, what, that's what he said to me. Wow, who can it be? Yeah. Anyway, we, um, let's dump in now. Joe yeah. Paul, no, it's not Joe Paul, it's not, um, oh, mate. I don't know if he was an enforcer like you was for, for, for the craze or something, yeah, but yeah, yeah. He was, he was, he's, that, he's, he's from that era. Let's keep talking there, come, you know. Yeah, I remember, I, I, remember when, I remember when they buried, uh, uh, was it Bridget, the last one who yeah, died? Yeah, And, uh, you know, he had the, the whole hearse, not, not hearse, he had the... That was like Courtney doing that, wasn't it? The horses yeah, and everything yeah, there, yeah, from, yeah, the yeah. black horses and the, the all yeah. that. And the amount of people that were there... That was few, you there, Jeff? No, I wasn't there. I was in the area where the, where the cemetery was, where they okay, buried it. Okay, okay. And uh, the amount of people that were there, I just couldn't believe it, mate. You know, and, and again, you know, villains, 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 villains. What could it be? I'm, I'm, I don't know, mate. You come in. Frankie, Frankie, Fra Frankie, Frankie Fraser. Frankie Fraser. That's oh, it. Oh, Frank, yeah. Oh, nice one. Oh, nice one. Well, yeah. I don't Frank, know how that came to me. Yeah, Frank, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. known Frank years, man. Frankie Fraser, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Old. He's dead now, you know. Yeah, I heard He's yeah. dying, yeah, yeah, Frank. And he said, what do you want to say to him? He said, uh, he said, it was wrong what they done to you, he said. He said, but it's good to know we've got good people around us. I don't know if he meant me being in, in the pub around all the rest of them, yeah, around yeah. them all, but, but he said to me, it's, it's wrong what they did to you. So, did you, so we've got your clubs. How many clubs did you work on, Jeff? Oh, for life of me, I can't Jim. even remember now. I mean, I worked in the Farringdon uh, EC1, and the majority of clubs that are in that area, I can't, yeah. cannot remember the names of them now, but we used to work, you know, for, Sometimes during the week, Tuesday, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, even on a Sunday, that place where they got the swimming pool and everything. Uh, okay. Down by, uh, is it old, old something, uh, somewhere out in London. inside, inside the club, inside the, not for Denzies or Power no, Joe's? No, the, the pool, pool's inside the club. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a number of uh, door work back in the 90s. You know, the garage scene and all that kind of stuff. Well, tell me about the time you worked with me, Jeff. You worked with me on the yeah, door, didn't you, mate? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I see, exactly. go on, I see, go on, you're talking. I see Jeff on the door, right? I was working in a, in a place called Central Park in Acton, yeah, yeah? yeah? And my mate Johnny Lawrence, who owned it, with a guy called Willie Waldron, told me that they had a guy coming to help me because I was getting a little bit of trouble in there. Mm. So I was at the door waiting, and all of a sudden, this guy, he was... Absolutely massive, man. He had glasses, he had this blue suit on, and he was ginormous, mate. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, wow, I've got trouble tonight. And it was Jefferson King. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <coughs> my, my, uh, my biggest memory of that, that uh, place we used to work at um, was one night, uh, the birds that work upstairs and that started screaming at the top of the stairs, there's trouble, there's trouble. So we've 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 run up. I was standing. I was, I was behind you though. But no, you weren't. No, you weren't. Yeah, no, behind you. We got no. it. And when we got upstairs to the main room and went through the doors, there was like two. I don't know if there were two rival gangs or there was a group on that side and a group Chelsea on that side. Chelsea had that. Yeah, Chelsea had that. And yeah. there was chairs and there was bottles and there was glasses and there, the whole place was being smashed to shit. And I just remember you like grabbing a few people and dashing them down the staircase and. <laughs> I think I, I think I stopped working here after that after that night. <laughs> <laughs> so you so where else where else you were, Jeff? What happened? Someone, what happened? We just uh, EC one EC one was a, a garage club, a big yeah. garage club in Farringdon. Um, that was a bit hectic. Uh, when I say hectic, you know, the, I I, I love the garage scene. I, I love the music. I love the females. I, I love the whole. The whole scene about the garage scene. Yeah. Um, did you so, get to ecstasy? Did you ever try an ecstasy, Jeff? Ecstasy. Oh, I mean that was that was the drug of the day. That was that, it. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't go wrong dropping a couple of ecstasy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, I was a bit fond on the LSD as well, a bit, you know, micro dots and stuff like that. Well, yeah. I took one. I took one in one day, and that was it. Never again. <laughs> oh, don't mean Jeff. Don't mean. I the micro top. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. For twelve so, hours, just, yeah, you're yeah. Missing, you're missing. See, it's all sorts of crazy, <laughs> crazy things. Elephants running around. Everywhere. I remember being. On, I remember standing on the stage one day uh, next to uh, EZ or one of them uh, those garage garage uh, guys, and um, look, looking looking over the uh, 
the club and looking over the people dancing and everything and I couldn't make out if they were fighting or they were dancing <laughs> yeah. or like, you know, like, like, you know. So who did you meet in the garbage game? Anybody, uh, Jeff? Uh, just, famous? just, 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 just uh, the ones that are, that are famous for their garage music of that time. Did you, you ever know? go to Browns? 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 Browns. Le- Browns. No, Legends. Legends. I used yeah. to go to yeah. uh, uh, Samantha's. Samantha oh, Fox. Samantha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Place, Samantha. Didn't she? Uh, I used to work. I used to work on the door there. I, actually, working on the door there. I remember working on the door there one time, and um, the guy that I was working with. Got his face opened up by uh, some geezer with a, a, a razor blade or a standing knife okay. or something, and he didn't even realise that the guy had swiped Damn. him across the face. Really? And next, you know, he was, oh, it was oh, terrible, like, you know, just fucking terrible. Opened up with his face. Just opened up his, yeah, from like the cheekbone all the way down parts to his, to his mouth. But because he, he cut him so nicely that he didn't even realise at first that he actually Damn. cut him. You know what I mean? I remember seeing his teeth in the side of his face. And like, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what was the worst club you worked in, Jeff? What worst place for such? I think the worst place I probably worked in was that place I worked in with you. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so Jeff, tell me about like I don't really like to talk about it because it's not really uh, you, yeah. Mm. But I've got to ask you, what made you get into the, the, these drugs that got into trouble, Jeff? And what made you go into? I mean, I knew you. Right, as 19 stone, yeah? Goodness. I knew Drew as a big, big man that everybody really, really respected yeah. and was frightened of, mate, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Because you never had to say too much. You was just Jefferson yeah. King. They yeah. knew that, yeah? yeah? And so what made you turn? I don't know if it's a matter of turning, but... Uh, I don't know. Something you liked? Was it what, something yeah, you liked? I suppose I, I liked it. Because I was on it eight years, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, like, I like getting high and, you know, uh, when, when you like getting high on, on certain drugs, you're, you're around certain people and... Um, you can't get away from it. You know, uh, before you know it, you're in the mix and um, before you know it, you know, money runs out or, you know, someone suggests something that's going to do this, going to do that to get some... To get paid or whatever, you, you know, you, 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 you're sort of like you're so far down in the trenches, you can't even you can't even stick your head over the top, let alone fucking climb over the top, you know. Um, when the whistle goes, you, you, you're just so far down in the trenches that you, you don't see nothing. Every day is the same. Every day is like what well, they call it Groundhog Day. It's like every you get day, up in the morning, or not day. even it isn't even in the morning, mate. Is it you've been up all night? Yeah, you've been up all night. You might yeah. been up for days, you know, and, and don't even know what day of the week it is. And all, you don't all, eat, all do you? Kind of of don't eat, don't train, don't see nobody. You know, just what an existence. You know, when I, when I think, when I think of, you know, when I see, I, I see you. Um, one day I've seen you, well, obviously it was years, but one time I see you as big as a house, massive, big, big respect for Jefferson King, you know what I mean? He's huge, you know what I mean? So much respect, mate, he's unbelievable. The next time I see you, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Because you still had, but the only thing you've never got rid of, Chef, is your shoulders. The only thing you've got rid of is the size of your shoulders. You've got the width for your shoulders, it's never seemed to have gone. Yeah. It's the width. It's that muscle. You yeah, know, the muscle, the muscle's yeah. got the actual muscle thickness yeah. density. Yeah, I couldn't well. believe it, Jeff. Yeah. When I see yeah. that, yeah. and I thought, I looked yeah. at you and I thought, well, I was yeah. in myself, Jeff. Listen, mate, I know. You know, when I got when I got nicked, I was like eighty six kilo or something. Wow, you know? I was mate. fucking, I was ruined, mate. Totally ruined. You know, I'm talking twenty four hours a day, night and day, seven days a week. You know, just selling drugs at night, smoking drugs, just you know, disgust me just to even think about it. You know, how I was living. Do you know what I mean? Uh, if like I could said, if I could have booked into fucking prison, I would have booked in. I needed to go. Was it that like bad? Me too, I, I Jeff. To go. Me Years too. Ago. I mean, I've got an IPP. That's that, not about that's me. Anything, yeah. That's the only thing that was going to save me was um, going to prison. I, I, I just wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't capable of doing it outside of prison. I just uh, did, probably I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to, didn't want to be strong enough to do it outside of prison. I, I was quite happy to go with the tide and just, you know, carry on doing the, fuckeries that I was doing. So if you could, if you could, if you could say anything to uh, people, young people, kids, right? If you could say anything to them now, what would you say, Jeff? As far as well, drugs like, is concerned. Like, like they yeah. say, say, say no. You know, it, it, it might be, it might be nice. It might be a nice feeling that those first couple of times, but it, it, it ends up in the sewer. You know, 
it, it doesn't end up no other place than the sewer. You know, even if even if you are the drug dealer and you're not actually smoking the drugs, you're going to end up behind bars. You you know you're going to end up getting robbed. You're going to end up getting beat down by somebody who wants who wants what you got. You know, there, there's no there's no there's nothing there's nothing nice about it at all. There's nothing nice about it at all. There's no there's no fun in it. it like I said, it might be fun in the beginning, but once you pass that stage where you, you're not you're not looking at it as a uh, uh, a once in a lifetime experience and you're looking at it as, a, as an experience it ends up in the sewer so yeah anyone out there that's uh, contemplating uh, smoking crack sniffing heroin or whatever stay away from it yeah exactly <laughs> so what do you want to do now in your life Jeff? I'm just trying to salvage what I can really you know I'll come out in a better place and um, you know a bit of thought better state of mind and I, I just want to salvage myself I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a gangster. I'm not a villain. I'm not. I'm not. Yes, I was a drug dealer, but it wasn't me. It's not me. You know. I'm. I'm not. You know about that. I just happened to slip into that. Yeah. Because I got to hear. Because I. I got to hear about it. I got to hear about you in Southall, and everybody was petrified of you. And you was running this and running that and all that. You know. And I couldn't believe it. I thought, no, nah, that ain't the right geezer. That ain't Jefferson King. Then. All of a sudden, you get to hear that it is, mm. you know, that all them people in, in South were petrified of you. You know what I mean? And, you, and then all of a sudden, boom, that happens. Yeah, well, you know, I used to run around with a mate of mine called Andy Lum, and um, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't think of the uh, the amount of people we've we've gone around robbing. Yeah, I've been told. De de dealers, I've been told dealers that. that. Yeah. You know, my, my worst fear was going to prison and, and, and coming across someone that says, <laughs> "You don't remember me, do you?" <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you know, you, you and your mate robbed me or whatever. And, but it never, never happened. Touchwood. But you know, um, when I think of what we used to do back then, scandalous. Yeah, me too, Jeff. Me too, scandalous. Man. Anyway, look, um, Jeff. Thanks very much, Mucker. Thank you, Ray. And, and like, I just tell, I'd like you to tell people that. What you're going to try and get into now, as far as um, yeah, well, yeah. the personal the personal training really, yeah. uh, you know, that's that is that is where my my heart lies and, and my motivation lies is uh, uh, training people. You know, I'm very good at doing that, and I'd like to do that. And I'm also an, an artist, believe it or not. Um, fantastic art, oh, um, yeah, fantastic. You know, so I, I would like to crack into or break into the, the tattoo the tattoo business. Um, but we was talking about that yesterday. Wasn't yeah, we? and the, the person, tell them how long it is. The, the person that you uh, recommended, my that, that was looking for an artist, was saying that you know he wanted that person who's an artist to be working there for three years without any pay, just to be trained in that. And you know, well, obviously I can't do that. I ain't got three years to fuck about. Just you know, not getting paid. just on three so. years anyway, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. So um, you know, I can't, I can't do that. But um, I, I will learn how to put my artwork on on skin and um, and go forward from there really. so you're not you're not thought about getting getting a, yourself a gun not a gun yes no not I've, a got gun, a machine. Like I've got a machine. machine I've got a machine I've got a machine I've got a machine I've got a yeah. machine um, I was waiting for the I'm waiting to get some fake skin and that so I can you know put some stuff down on some fake skin uh, some artwork and that uh, but yeah yeah I've got the machine slowly slowly so what you think I mean We've been given, me and you have been given the gym, yeah? Yeah. Right. And uh, it's in Harefield. Uh, do you think that it kick off there, Jeff? I reckon so. I mean, I've, I've, I've got a bit of interest at the moment. I've got, you know, a couple of people that are willing to sign up for 10, 10 sessions each and, uh, you know, willing to pay up front for it. And, it, you know, and it was just the other day we, that I saw the gym. It was just the other day that, you know, it was known to people that, I was doing the personal training and we've already got a bit of interest. So I'm hoping that, yeah, that, that, that takes off and, um, you know, we get some people down there. All right, Maka, we're going to do a bit more about what, what we do. Um, we're going to do our own paperwork and all that about the gym. Yeah. We're going to go around and put it in letterboxes yeah. and, and see people like Jeff. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Ray. You, mate. Ray, love you, love you, love you. Love you. Yeah. Beautiful. Magic. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh. Yeah, bang, bang, Ray Hall, yeah. Bye-bye.